Cyberpunk 2077 is now 154 days away. This due to the fact that while I'm uploading this, it just received a delay earlier today. Although fortunately, the massive reveal and somewhat kickoff of the new marketing campaign and the final marketing campaign for this game is only seven days away. As in just seven days, we do have the Night City Wire. That being on the 25th of June. In this video, what I wanna do is prepare you for that. Get you up to date on all the various aspects of Cyberpunk 2077 news, what we know about the game, what we know about the Night City Wire and the recent marketing push, and just overall get you informed for that event and what we may or may not see at it, including some extra things like the ARG and other gameplay details to recently be released. I was planning on doing this video today one way or another, although we also got the news today that Cyberpunk 2077 is getting a two month delay. Earlier today, CD Projekt Red took to Twitter to say, we have decided to move the launch of Cyberpunk 2077 from September 17th to November 19th, which for any of those curious, that still is a Thursday. Despite this, they go on to mention how Cyberpunk 2077 is finished both content and gameplay wise, so as far as the quests, cutscenes, skills, and items, all of that is already there. But with such an abundance of content and complex systems interweaving with each other, we need to properly go through everything, balance game mechanics, and fix a lot of bugs. So overall at this news, I am surprised, but understanding. Based off everything we've seen thus far around Cyberpunk 2077, it could be a game of the decade, a generation-defining game. Waiting two more months for me is totally understandable. I say it's surprising because there were several comments making it seem like this was closer to release. Like during some of their recent financial calls or Q&As, they mentioned how there were no concerns about finishing the game in time and how most of it is done already, which was echoed here. But overall, for me at least, if this means a higher chance or higher likelihood of that final product being even better, then I'm fine with a two month delay. It's frustrating in the short term, but in the long term, it certainly could pay off. And I do feel it is worth mentioning that the original delay came before the virus outbreak, before the work from home orders. Not that that inherently excuses everything, but it is worth noting COVID likely played a role in this. And outside of that, of course, next week we do have Night City Wire, which is shaping up to be something that should be a pretty huge event. Something interesting about Night City Wire is we don't know exactly what we're going to be seeing. Considering for the past two years, CD Projekt Red has shown off gameplay that is almost certainly going to be here. And even further, this has been alluded to on Twitter. I think it's safe to assume we'll see some amount of gameplay of the game, just people playing, doing some of the various quests or missions. During a recent podcast that CD Projekt Red participated in, they mentioned how players have seen nothing yet. So it certainly looks like there's a lot on the horizon. But even further, with Night City Wire, it's not only just going to be one standalone event where we get a new gameplay dump, and that's really it. There'll probably be some interviews and other things to go along with it, but even further, it looks like this is really the kicking off point for the final marketing push from Night City Wire now until release in November. During the recent financial call, we also heard about how there are plans for a digital only or a physical plus digital marketing push, and it seems like we are getting the former, as not only are we getting new gameplay around Cyberpunk 2077, but also hands-on and impressions from the media. In the past, they showed off this image, where hands-on will be taking place around this in June. This was prior to the delays, but even now with the news of the most recent delay to November, at the end of the statement, they also mention this week journalists from all over the world are starting to independently play the game. We are eager and quite stressed to hear their opinions as well as see your reactions when they publish their previews right after we air Night City Wire on the 25th of June. So there should be a ton to go over and break down as far as the new gameplay goes, but even more to go over and break down as far as the impressions go. Over the past two summers, I was able to give you my first impressions just seeing the game, but it was somebody else playing. This year, several users will probably be able to give you their first impressions having played some of the game, which is a huge milestone. It's where you really start to find out one way or another how good it is or how well it comes together. And although we know a major focus of all of this will just be showing us and hearing Hearing about Cyberpunk 2077 itself, the core game, CD Projekt Red has also confirmed some of this pre-release marketing will be of some of the DLCs coming to this. 
It seems like the DLCs for this game are almost in three categories. The free single player DLCs, which seemingly will be smaller, again free, and in the past it was described how in the two months following the release of this game, every two weeks there would be a free DLC pack coming out. So over two months, four free DLC packs, which in all likelihood would be very small things similar to what we had with The Witcher 3. Two major expansions, which would follow that up, these just being single player expansions, we don't have many details on them. They mention how the DLCs would likely be teased in the months prior, while the expansions would likely be teased in the weeks prior, and then finally that multiplayer mode that is on the way for this. Right now, we don't know much as far as what exactly this multiplayer mode will or will not entail, but what we do know is it's still a ways away, and only planned to release after the single player content is done, or at least that is the plan right now. One of the other big pieces of news we got around this game is how it'll be played on Xbox Series X. It's going to be a part of the Xbox Series X smart delivery program and it seems like it'll have no time limit on this meaning that if you buy the copy for the older gen of xboxes it will automatically upgrade to an xbox series x version initially that was more of an issue when it was coming out before the consoles potentially but now that it's in november and the xbox series x will almost certainly be out at that point or right around that point not nearly as large but at the very least we actually know that there is going to be an xbox series x enhanced version of this game and actually two separate variants of this an initial launch version which is better Better, but I guess not all the way there. But then later, following the launch of the new console, one that is built specifically for it and even more so upgraded. And although there's been a big focus on A, how good the game looks, and B, just how much you could do, how much is going on in the background, they have talked about several times now how they are keeping low-end PCs in mind, and they do intend for this game to run on low-end PCs. It seems like one of their focuses they've had from the beginning. Although speaking of development, from their recent investors call, we know that around 600 people at CD Project Red are on cyberpunk based projects, and due to the fact that much of this is working from home, they actually sent out 700 workstations to devs around the world that did contain the game. Some of the employees working on the game are in both the single player and the multiplayer mode because there's some kind of connection or quite a bit of similarities between them. Specifically 40 devs at this studio, which I could never pronounce right, are on the multiplayer mode exclusively, and we also know that 150 or so people are on the QA team testing this game right now, which is actually twice that of what we had for The Witcher 3. And if there's ever a testament to your game being good, even further it's mentioned how many devs have full access to the game and are playing it for fun to wind down after actually working on the game. Moving over to the more gameplay focused aspect of this and some of the reveals around that, in a recent podcast it was mentioned how there are three times as many ways to solve missions in this one compared to The Witcher 3, and in that are dumb ways. The example they give is how you talk to someone and it ends up with you getting shot. Instead of you trying to fight back or even progress the mission, you just decide to run away and go buy a hamburger. The mission will continue seemingly in the background as you make that choice. So they have accounted for some of those more odd aspects in the different solutions or ways to progress a mission. There's over a thousand NPCs that have handmade routines. So basically their daily commute and daily tasks they will complete. That is a pretty astonishing number, and it's actually something that we saw somewhat already, not only in The Witcher 3, but on a larger scale in Red Dead Redemption 2. It was awesome in that game, and I'm very excited to see it in Night City. Several of the major rating agencies have already assigned ratings to this game, and through that, we actually get an insight as to the game itself and its gameplay. From the ESRB, we have heard how characters use handguns, machine guns, rifles, explosives, and melee weapons, including enhanced limbs as melee weapons. As far as character customization options, there are a wide variety of things, including the size and type of genitals on your character. There's going to be chem usage throughout this game recreational usage so you could drink enough until your screen blurs and you are able to drive drunk in Cyberpunk 2077. Speaking of vehicles, this is actually one of the things we've seen quite a bit of over the past couple of weeks and months as far as teasers go. Just several of the vehicles to appear in this game, some we've seen in trailers but are now getting better in-engine close-ups or renders of, which may be representative of how much you could actually customize cars in-game. We get a teaser for all the various gang logos that will be appearing in Cyberpunk. Gangs are a big part of this world, and I have a feeling this will be something we see quite a bit of over the next couple of months through the marketing campaign. Even further, one of the most interesting things, we do have this Microsoft in-engine trailer. 
So although it just looks like some glamour shots, it was confirmed this is in fact Night City and it is representative of Night City. It shows you a variety of things. Firstly, just all these various people, the concert, but also the density of the city and a better idea of what it'll look like at night all around just looking really cool. I really want to explore this place. And one final thing to go over is the ARG. Over the past couple of years, Cyberpunk 2077 has had an active ARG running. Some of these concluded with rewards for those who were the first to find out the solution, but we still have the actively ongoing one around Cyberpunk 2077 that isn't concluded. I made several videos on this, I could take the next 10 minutes and explain how we got to this point, but I'll just link to some of those past videos. And what you may have remembered was several packages went out to several YouTubers, actually I was fortunate enough to be one of them, and to make a long story short, it led to this Netwatch website. Mysterious looking, and a page on this for the archives was found that required a login, and the login for this page has yet to be found, but it could hypothetically be the next step in this, and it seems like it could be likely that in this next big marketing push we'll get something. There's also actually an Xbox plus Cyberpunk based ARG. This one is already totally solved, it was solved in a day and it led to the trailer for the Cyberpunk themed Xbox One that people are now getting, this being for the older style Xbox, not the new and up and coming Series X. I'll have a link to this post down below that details everything around this if you want to read up on it, but again, it's it's already solved, so I'm not going to talk about it too much in this one. Overall though, I think that's what you'll need to know to be prepared for this big new reveal coming in just one week. Even though we of course are seeing these delays, I still think this is something to get massively excited for. Because one, there is a lot more to find out about and just see for this game. But even further, we're going to finally start to get some of those player impressions. Likely this in the form of media impressions, at least initially, but still, actual people playing the game outside of CD Projekt Red, outside of just a curated gameplay trailer, and hearing what they think about it. I'm sure they'll try different things, go on different routes, different builds. You have to imagine it'll only be a snippet of the game, but even still, it could be very, very revealing. There should be a lot more Cyberpunk 2077 content on the way, as they're getting into their final marketing push, I'm going to be covering just about all of it. So if you want to get subscribed, now is a great time to do so. Otherwise though, I thank you all again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you all next time. Later.